What was very mind-changing for me was a trip I did to the Antarctic in 2001, um, which really made me very aware of how nature and man are connected, how we are part of nature ourselves, even though we tend to forget. You know, we get so busy with our urban life that we, we almost have to stop in our tracks and literally smell the roses, but also see the roses, see the flowers, and see maybe something that just grows from between the tiles on the, on the pathway. I'm not trying to copy nature. What I'm trying to do is basically give my interpretation of what nature means for me, how I relate to nature, how nature is a living entity that we are just a small part of. I would say that a lot of ideas just come to me. Sometimes it really is inspirational, like going to the Antarctic, but it can also just be a book that you read, or something you see on the news, or, or you know, something you hear, like music, can be very inspirational. When I go into my studio, I often have a preconceived idea of what I want to make, but a lot of it is very intuitive. The way I work when I make the models for these sculptures is I make them in a block of foam. So everything that's carved away, like in stone or in wood, doesn't come back, it's gone. So that means that every decision you take is irreversible, which I find very comfortable. 13 forms, same shape, all about perception all have a hole. You look through the hole, you see other pieces. They're all different in atmosphere, they're all different because they are a different material. What I love about this specific one, because it's chrome, it's a mirror, it reflects. So while I'm looking through the hole, I'm, I'm in there too. My own being becomes a part of the sculpture I'm looking at. Everything else that's around here is also reflected in, in the chrome. Now, the interesting contrast is that when you look at the clear crystal piece over there, that almost does the same thing. Like the chrome, it works like a lens. It shifts what you're looking at. How different from having a white marble or having a black marble? There's a stone right there which is called sodalite. It comes from Bolivia. It has beautiful crystally blue segments in the stone. It's very colorful very happy stone, I would say. That one over there is onyx that comes out of the Grand Canyon. Very layered, almost like it's painted. So all of these, what they do is they make you aware that if you change the periphery of the hole that you're looking through, you're actually looking differently because your feeling is differently, you know. And that to me is, is an essence of trying to put across that we're all having different perceptions. That if I have a lot of people in this room, they will all tell me a different story. The physical body that we use, that we're so entrenched with, because the physical body is what we wake up in every morning, 70% of it is fluids. And you look into it, it's almost like you're looking into the ocean, very watery, but it's also very much a cell structure. The physical body is also where I am and where the world starts. Now the physical body has this capacity of being a super athlete, but this has the capacity of being a scientist. So there's a, a distinct capacity that the mental body has. I kind of gave shape by wrapping it in gold leaf, these little golden ideas. The emotional body is the body that can allow us to feel love, that can allow us to connect with other people. The emotional body can be hurt and can close off, but if we're aware of it, we can choose to open our emotional body. We can choose to let the other come in. The vibrational body is how we stand in the world on a daily basis. If we're happy and we have a lot of energy, our vibrational body is big, 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 big. From there, I go to a much more introverted, what I call the spiritual body. As you can see, they're vertical golden elements. A 
I told you earlier, when you have a really good idea, I express that by using the gold leaf. Now there, you see several gold leaf elements, golden ideas that flow to the top. When we meditate or when we think about life, about death, about our existence and how we want to be in our existence, there are moments where we come to understanding. I see that as moments, as little snippets of enlightenment. So I translate them into these little snippets of golden moments in time. From that spiritual body, I go to the creative body. And the creative body, to me, is on a very high vibrational level because the creative body is really the awareness that we are creators. We create. All the time we're adding little pieces, little cells, if you like, to that big creative body that we're all connected to. And when I talk about the connection, that's when I get to that piece over there. It's called the ethereal body. It's the connection between the earth and the earthly existence that we're in. We are part of the whole, essence to essence. We connect from, if you like, the ocean of awareness to the simple statement of being, the simple being. That gold bar, we all have inside of us. And even if some people try to hide it, it's, it's there. It's the essence of who we can be when we get to our core, to where we are only love and without judgment. The overall title of my exhibition, two installations, is Looking Beyond the Mirror. Me being an artist, I see certain things that for me really trigger me. And I would share that with people and somebody might say, I never even saw that. That kind of change or differences, I should say, in perception is what I tried to put in this exhibition. Looking beyond the mirror basically means become aware of the fact that you perceive your reality by who you are, by your framework. It's an invitation to kind of reflect on how you perceive, how you're set in your opinions, how you're set in, in your idea of reality, your idea of truth.